Welcome. Let's kick the tires on the AI uh, design assistant from Anthology. Now we've uh, heard uh, the announcements and uh, the opportunities. So let's take a look at how it works. I have a course here that I'm familiar with. I used to teach this course and uh, it'll allow me to uh, evaluate uh, the content critically. But uh, we're going to start by uh, changing a couple of things about the course. First, I want to change the default um, a graphic. And so uh, I'll go ahead and uh, start by editing the image. And so I will select the image. And this time, instead of uploading the image, I will select stacked images. Now, this is actually a little bit different than generating images. Uh, the stack images means that someone has already viewed them and they kind of make sense. See, when you generate images with AI, uh, sometimes you get kind of crazy things. Uh, and there is an option here later I'll show you. You can generate your images, but the stack, it, it's kind of a safer way. Uh, means someone uh, generated it and then someone reviewed it. So notice that uh, the prompt already uh, adopted my course name. So this is empty course. The system just knows my course name and it's already selected some options. I'm going to uh, perhaps add uh, students to it. So let's see if I can find an image that perhaps includes uh, individuals. So we're going to uh, flip through some of the options and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, uh, select Maybe this one. All right. So that's straightforward. I can adjust it, save it. All right. So this is the first feature. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the auto generating modules. Now, I love the idea of being able to get multiple modules generated at the same time. But uh, let's say that you are just trying to adopt um, a module on AI for students. So doesn't matter what course you're teaching, you might want to teach your students about AI. And so you can generate one module at a time um, in Ultra this way. Let's go ahead and generate a few. What's going to happen next is there's going to be some auto generation of the default amount of modules that's depending only on my course name. Now, that's not uh, what I'm looking for. So what I am going to do next is I'm going to look up uh, the textbook for this course and uh, we're going to take the table of contents as a prompt. So let's take the first nine chapters. That's how uh, much of the textbook we're covering in this class. And we'll put this in the description. So now we've specified each chapter. Hopefully this is going to copy to the amount of modules. And we're going to use chapter as kind of um, the initial prompt before the title. So I put nine chapters. We'll ask for uh, nine modules. Let's do that. All right. So we have some generated modules. And I can see that the titles are matching my outline. If I look through the chapters, this looks great. And uh, the descriptions are fine as well. So uh, great job on uh, creating the modules. Now I'm going to pre-select the modules. Notice that there is not a selected all. So this indicates that instructors makes a conscious choice to uh, or deliberate choice to include the modules in their course. We'll add them in. All right. So in just a few moments, we created a structure scaffolding for the course. None of these descriptions are final. We can go in and edit them to a detail. So let's go ahead and move on. We're going to proceed to create a document. Now a document is just uh, content that we can then reuse for questions. So we'll go ahead and put just a few paragraphs here of content. And we'll call that introduction. There we go. Let's go ahead and save it. Great. So we have 
our document. Now we have an option to auto-generate questions about the document. Uh, for formative assessment, this is great. Um, and just as quickly as I was able to purchase copy and paste, this can be typed out or it can be uh, created with the help of the textbook, maybe as a chapter summary. We'll go ahead and generate some questions. So by default, um, this is going to take the document as the prompt. And Inspire Me is just an option to see a few questions of different kind. Now for the needs of this demo, uh, we're going to we're going to switch to true and false questions. It's going to be a little easier for uh, for me to quickly evaluate them. So we are asking for true and false questions. Let's go ahead and generate them. All right. So here are our questions. Uh, Node.js is an advanced version of JavaScript. Yes, true is correct. Um, I would agree with question two with a little bit of an asterisk. Uh, and then the fourth question is incorrect. So not too bad. Now I would uh, kind of question uh, two because uh, you could certainly learn uh, JavaScript let's take a peek at our source document so looking at this right so the source document specifies that um, good working knowledge of HTML uh, is uh, um, is expected and so you need to have good understanding of HTML that's that's fair that follows the document and of course uh, I could uh, modify either the uh, wording or, or otherwise. All right, so let's uh, take a look at um, these questions. We're going to ask an assistant. Uh, let's make sure that um, our formatting here is correct. Uh, we're looking at uh, the answers here. And let's see what we have all right so um, question is false uh, this is not an inversion runtime environment okay uh, so let's see what uh, our source document said here right so here's the language saying advanced server-side version of JavaScript so again following the source of our document um, this is correct or acceptable uh, certainly we could make an argument here um, all right uh, true true and then I agree with uh, chat GPT about um, question four so again the business of questions is not a simple one um, it's very difficult to create good questions uh, so um, of course the question analysis um, feature inside of uh, black learn would help instructors over time to increase uh, the quality of questions but as is not uh, not a bad job by the way if you uh, select matching questions you can still copy and paste them into chat GPT for for a second opinion all right so now we're going to select the questions that are uh, matching our document so I uh, like these questions we'll go ahead and create um, a question bank uh, we're going to then uh, create a, uh, a test and uh, this test is going to be based on a question pool that we just created there we go we'll select all these approved questions and our quiz is ready all right that's not bad that's for formative assessment that's really a nice um, nice shortcut nice kind of performance and uh, there we go we have uh, a module we have a document and we have a quiz created excellent now let's uh, go to the next step and that is an assignment so for this assignment I'm going to use um, something that um, I've used in this class I'm just going to uh, copy and paste the instructions exactly like they are in the assignment. So 
this means that I did not optimize it for um, for the for AI but this would be kind of an assignment that uh, minus some of the formatting needs to be perhaps corrected from copy and paste this is what students would use to then submit their program and then have it graded let's create the rubric by going to settings of the assignment and then add a grading rubric instead of creating one uh, by hand manually we'll go ahead and generate one so by default it's going to use the course name and create the most uh, reasonable uh, rubric for the course uh, which may work for um, many courses so we have uh, some general understanding um, ability to create compliant pages this this looks great I'm going to paste in the assignment information just to see if we can create a rubric that matches um, this particular assignment not just the course but this particular assignment all right so we have um, multiple levels in the rubric knowledge and understanding demonstrates comprehensive understanding of JavaScript all right so our readings specify chapters 3 and 10 that's what the rubric says that's great it's a nice general uh, row that uh, I can use if the assignment has uh, issues that need to be mitigated by the textbook uh, code implementation creativity uh, the assignment mentions that you should be creative that the code that's given you need to modify and change themes so that's uh, that's a good option and then documentation all right so this is a, a nice rubric that we can use in the course we'll go ahead and create continue and we'll give it a name and we can uh, add it to the assignment all right let's so I'll just call it program one okay so we created scaffolding for the course have a nice course image uh, we have learning modules that create some containers for our content we put some content together for a document generated quiz for it and then an assignment earlier I mentioned that there's a difference between stock images and generated images so uh, at the learning module level if we find an image typically uh, AI generates images with words that are not uh, real words so let's go ahead and modify this image we will go back to image editing and we have here an option to look for stock images so let's say that we would like to see a jQuery something that relates to the um, title of the module and we have some images that are tagged with jQuery um, we could also maybe look for a library because jQuery is a library so um, these are nice stock images versus generating images and here we'll have um, a library with books and so these images uh, can be more creative uh, but for that reason uh, might need uh, a few more clicks to find exactly what we're looking for all right so here we see kind of a, a magic touch of AI uh, in words it's trying to use uh, we'll give it another try all right and so this is all right we'll go ahead and uh, pick this image
I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I certainly enjoyed using these features because not only do they save time in having to format these modules and having to um, create the questions from scratch, but also they kind of open up my mind to the content and uh, uh, I was able to uh, think about uh, the rubric in different ways. I was able to um, come up with uh, different views on, uh, on the course itself. So uh, I think it's nice uh, to have an option of not just talking to yourself while creating a course, but have some external kind of ideas come your way. So I really appreciate it. Thank you.